We are live. Okay. Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Contempasis. I, along with Tanisha Sullivan, serve as the co-chairs of this task force that is uh, reviewing the process that uh, is in play for this year's school assignments to the exam schools and is charged specifically with coming up with a permanent solution uh, to the uh, admi admissions process. I'd like to welcome the members of the task force and also as well, those who have tuned in and those who have signed up to uh, participate in the uh, meeting. We on the task force will be listening uh, to all of the comments that are made and uh, we will uh, hold on to all of this until all of the speakers have uh, that have expressed an interest have been heard. Uh, we are, uh, what I will do now, if I may, is turn to Lena Harvix, our uh, associate, and ask her to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Acevedo. No. Ms. Aguirre. Mr. Craigor. Present. Dr. Freeman Wisdom. Present. Ms. Grassa. Present. Ms. Lum. Present. Ms. Nagasawa. Ms. Garrett. Present. Ms. Tang. Present. Ms. Waite. Uh, Ms. Sullivan. Present. And Mr. Contempasses. Present. Thank you, Ms. Parvek. I'll, uh, we are pleased to be offering live simultaneous interpretation in Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean, Portuguese, Somali, Cantonese, Mandarin, Vietnamese, Arabic, and American Sign Language. After I finish introducing the interpreters, we will ask Ms. Sullivan, the co-chair, to add a few words and then move on to our uh, presentation. Our Cantonese interpreter is Anna Say. Will you please give Zoom instructions in Cantonese, please? Sure, thank you. Just in like how I Anna, I will come at way when he take on Gong the Watong Bo Fanny for more. You always I think of Gong the Watong Bo Fanny for more. See how they lay Yang Guang Ping, Kindle, go, they call you come like Dim Digga, they call you Gan Cantonese, come later with Tango Gong the Watong Bo Fanny for Mogala. Come you young so gay a while, what they I pack a while, come you, a young Samo Dim get, go Dim Dim Dim, come like come, Dim Dim Dim, come that's a way. 聽到廣東話同步翻譯服務咯,簡Cantonese。如果你沒有這個功能的話,就請你去Zoom,網址更新最新的版本。多謝,Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Our Mandarin interpreter is Terry Yin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 大家好,我的名字叫Terry,我是你们的普通话翻译,待会呢,你就可以在这个屏幕下方看到有一个地球仪的图标,然后你点这个地球仪的图标,选择Chinese,就是普通话的翻译了,那如果你的用手机或者i
um, phần mềm mới nhất của Zoom để có thể bấm vào. Xin cảm ơn quý vị. Thank you. Thank you. Our Haitian Creole interpreter is Najee Sully. Sully? Bonjour tout le monde. Non, moi c'est Nadel Sully. Moi c'est interprète pour réunion ce matin. Hein? Donc, euh, moi très content pour m'avoir interprété pour nous matin. Hein? Donc, si nous avons besoin de um, créer un haïtien, de faire français, si vous avez des questions, tapez dans le chat. Là. Donc, moi espérer que la réunion ça va um, nous capable de tirer en pile en uh, instruction la donner. Si nous avons des questions, pas hésiter à um, taper dans le chat là ou bien à uh, faire un Merci et bonne session. Thank you, ma'am. Our Spanish interpreter, Randolph Dominguez. Good morning, everyone. My name is Randolph Dominguez. I am going to be your Spanish simultaneous interpreter for today. Muy buenos días, damas y caballeros. Mi nombre es Randolph Dominguez. Voy a ser su intérprete en el idioma español el día de hoy. Uh, para poder escuchar eh, en su idioma, en el idioma español, deben de buscar en la parte inferior de su pantalla un globo terráqueo. Una vez hayan pulsado allí, seleccionan el idioma español y van a poder escuchar mi interpretación de manera simultánea. Si lo está haciendo desde un celular, debe de pulsar los tres puntos a la mano superior derecha y allí seleccionar español. Si no pueden accesar, lo más probable es que tengan una versión no actualizada de Zoom. Si necesitan actualizar Zoom, deben de ir a www.zoomus Va, eh, .com barra inclinada update y allí pueden bajar la versión más reciente. Muchas gracias. Thank you, sir. Our Cape Verdean interpreter is Jojan Lopes. Ms. Lopes. Thank you, sir. Bon dia, mi nombre es Josiane, intérprete designada para que la reunión li. Para tener acceso a la interpretación simultánea, clica en el icono de globo en la parte inferior del ecrán y selecciona Cabo Verdeano. Si busca se consigue hoy aquel globo, certifica que tiene una versión más actualizada de Zoom. Obrigada. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our Portuguese interpreter is Christian Lettner. Olá, bom dia. Uh, obrigada por fazer parte dessa reunião hoje. E se você precisa de interpretação em português brasileiro, você pode encontrar o canal português clicando na parte de baixo da sua tela no globo e escolhendo o canal português. Se você tiver num celular, você pode clicar na parte superior direita nos três pontinhos e achar o canal em português. Obrigada. Thank you, ma'am. A Somali interpreter is Camila Jamal. Hi, good morning. My name is Camila Jamal. I'm going to be your interpreter today. My name is Camila Jamal. I'm a teacher in Tanzania. And I'm here to talk to you about the Somali. I'm going to talk to you about the Somali. I'm going to talk to you about the Somali. I'm going to talk to you Thank you. Thank you. Our Arabic interpreter is Ahmed Al Rubaye. Hi, everyone. My name is Ahmed Al Rubaye. I will be your Arabic interpreter today. Marhaban Jamian. Ana Ismi Ahmed Al Rubaye. Ana Sakum Bitarjama Ila Lugal Arabia. Be in Kanakum Listima Ila Lugal Arabia. Menhilal Dabila Asuli Shasha, Sitishahidun Alamat Al Kol Ardia. Udrot Ala Alamat Al Kol Ardia, Satadar Leka Hiarat Al Lugat. أضغط على خيار اللغة العربية وعندها ستتمكن من استماع إلى اللغة العربية. شكرا جزيلا. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We also have American Sign Language interpreters Cynthia Ramos and Kara Schwartz. Kara. Cynthia. Okay. I'd like to now very briefly turn this over to my co-chair. Uh, Ms. Tanisha Sullivan, a few words. Thank you, uh, Mr. Contempasas. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to just start by um, just thanking uh, so many of our um, Boston neighbors um, and community 
uh, friends for joining us um, this morning. We, the numbers, every time I look at the attendee list, it just keeps increasing. And I think that really speaks to, you know, how important this issue um, is um, to so many of us across the city. Um, and so again, thank you for joining us this morning. I also want to thank um, our task force members who are able to join us this morning um, and BPS uh, support team. And of course, um, our fantastic interpreters, um, our interpretation team uh, for being with us this morning. I, I just want to remind us all that um, as we shared on Tuesday evening for our uh, task force, our, our standing task force meeting, as a task force, we wanted to be um, very intentional about starting this process um, with listening sessions. And so on Tuesday, this past Tuesday, we, um, uh, we spent uh, the majority of our meeting um, really listening and, and hearing from, again, our, our Boston community, um, our Boston families, our Boston stakeholders um, about um, our exam schools admissions process. And again, this morning, um, we are, um, spending some additional time trying to provide um, additional opportunities for, um, for our community to be heard on this issue. Um, and this will not be the last time. We have um, scheduled out, you should refer to the BPS website. We've scheduled out um, our next few uh, task force meetings. Um, they take place on Tuesday evenings, um, with some exceptions, so please check the calendar, um, but on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 7, um, and at each of our meetings, there will be an opportunity, of course, for public comment. Um, and so throughout this process, we want to make sure that as we're learning together, um, as we're co-designing this um, this, this policy together, um, these recommendations uh, together, that, um, that there is an opportunity um, for each of us, for each of you, for each of us um, to weigh in. Um, that's really important um, for, I, for, for both me and uh, Mr. Contempasas that that happens. So today we are listening and uh, many of you have already signed up and uh, Please, um, if you have the opportunity, if you have not done so already, you can also feel free to submit written testimony. Um, if you have recommendations that you want for us to consider, um, you can send those in writing um, as well um, to us through um, Ms. Parvex at, um, at BPS. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Parvex so we can get started. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, for the first speaker we have today is Anna Dorr. But before I say that, I need to say something else. Um, those who require interpretation services will have two minutes, uh, no, two extra minutes. And um, please begin by stating your name, affiliation, and what neighborhood you are from before you begin. And when I call your name, please raise your hand virtually on Zoom so we can identify you when it's your turn to testify. Um, first person to, uh, first speaker is Anna Dorr. Um, Anna Dorr. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful, thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm surprised to be first, but here I am. Um, I'm Anna Dorr. I'm from West Roxbury. I grew up in West Roxbury. I went through BPS myself and I send my three children to BPS, including a current sixth grader. Um, and my 11 year old is stressed out by the exam school admissions process. He feels anxiety about whether he's good enough, whether his grades will compare with uh, many of the private school students in West Roxbury. He's anticipating stigma from being quote, left behind. Of course, we are working through all of that with him and he will be okay, but I don't want that for my kid. I don't want that for any kid in Boston. Um, too many have experienced those feelings. 
I think the um, important and revolutionary idea of the temporary plan that's in place right now is the creation of a broad applicant pool and the implicit message to those students that they are capable of success at an exam school and that they are deserving of the opportunity. Um, and I hope that the new plan, whatever it is, will continue that idea of an applicant pool. I think the criteria should expand. I think it could include GPA and, and test scores and um, ranking within their school. I've heard Councillor Arroyo talk about that idea and I really like it. I think um, evaluating where a student stands among their peers on a more localized level could eliminate some of the grading scale disparities among schools and between public and private schools, and it could mitigate some of the uneven access to test prep. Um, but my, my idea is that perhaps once you have the applicant pool, all those students could receive a selection priority in the sixth and ninth grade assignment lottery, like what we do for second graders coming out of early learning centers. Um, I acknowledge that you may wanna do a two-tier priority where perhaps the top percentages in their class get a first priority and other, um, and students that meet other eligibility criteria could receive a second priority. But regardless, they each, each student in that pool would be eligible to rank the three exam schools. Um, but then if they didn't get a seat at the exam schools, they'd be more likely to get a seat at their fourth choice um, and have that opportunity. We might see then cohorts of these students from the applicant pool at some of the other high performing schools in the city. Um, and those students could enhance a culture of excellence at those schools. Um, we also might see what I've seen the K1, K1 lottery do, uh, expanding families perception of what schools might be a good fit for their child. It would certainly reduce some of the anxiety for these kids. Um, and most importantly, it would give these students in the pool the opportunity that we say they deserve to have a school that serves them and gives them um, the opportunity for an excellent education in middle and high school. Um, so thanks for listening. I hope you'll consider um, that idea. And regardless of the outcome, I do hope that we'll continue to commit this level of energy and resource and conversation to lifting up all our schools and all our students. Thank you. Next speaker is Amy, Amy Cleveland Hudson. Amy Cleveland Hudson. Hi. Hi, good morning. Thank you for this work, for your work on this task force and this opportunity to speak. My name is Amy Cleveland Hudson and I live in Charlestown and my children attend the Elliott Innovation School. I would ask that you work to ensure that there is a pathway for admission in ninth grade in addition to seventh grade. Many K-8 schools across the city have worked hard to create a strong community of learners in their K-8 schools. And many parents do not wish to send their children to a high school in seventh grade. I encourage you to continue to explore and expand the pathways to high school for incoming ninth graders, not only incoming seventh graders. And while I know this is a task force focused on exam schools, the conversation needs to continue around the large number of BPS students who will not be admitted. And we must commit to the opportunity for excellence for all of our students, not just the students within the walls of these three elite schools. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Yuping Zhang. Yuping Zhang. Hello. Yes, hello. Oh, Good morning. Yeah. Thank you very much to give this opportunity to speak up. My name is YP Zhang from Rosendale. Last July, Superintendent Casellas stated, I'm excited to partner with NWEA and appreciate their desire to work with BPS on our shared goal of increasing the diversity of our exam schools. BPS have identified 
a fair assessment that is aligned to the Massachusetts state standards. Test students on materials they already learned in school and has been reviewed and valid for bias. Ad administrator, this new entrance test is an important step forward in funding access to the exam school for all students. Given the in through them, the superintendent had for this exam and its validation for bias. And given the time, effort, and the money that has been on, on the effort to identify an appropriate exam, shouldn't be this exam to be a part of any recommendation that tax force makes to the school committee. Uh, my second uh, point is, Given the difficulties in normalized grades from various schools in Boston, as well as the subjective nature of the grading process itself, um, it would seem evident that exam need to be used as a part of any process to provide objectivity. Shouldn't the exam be part of any recommendation that task force make to the school committee? Thank you so much for listening to me. And um, then this is a really important uh, um, part of uh, listening to the community. Uh, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Next speaker is CJ Conan. I don't see anyone with that name. If there's CJ Conan in the Attendees, please raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, it's Kathleen Adams. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Kathleen Adams. I am a Boston Latin graduate. I am a parent of a current seventh grader and also a sixth grader in Boston Public Schools. This year has been so painful for everyone involved, but especially the sixth graders who've had such a tough time trying to figure out what last summer was, was it gonna be the NWEA? And then the whole craziness with this whole year. I just really wanna implore you to keep the exams in the exam school. For my daughter who's there, I wanna keep the rigor. I want to keep the, the excellence. Um, as a graduate, I want, I, I'm, I'm a proud graduate. I, I don't want that to go away. Um, and, and hopefully my son is in the pool for this year. Hopefully he'll get to go there, but I feel so bad for his classmates this year. They've had such an awful year. There's so much uncertainty. I feel so bad for the current fifth graders who are now going through this again please just come to a decision and don't put us through another year of this. Um, it's unfair with the pandemic. I, I just, they just need to have some certainty and know what is expected of them, what is needed and just don't change anything more. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next person is Christine Johnson followed by Mike Skolka and Dora Golding. Could you please raise your hand? Christine Johnson. Good morning, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, thank you so much for um, all the work you've done so far and for hosting these listening sessions. So um, the story I'm about to share is uh, not, I'm very like embarrassed to share this story, but I am definitely one of those families that um, game the system for my kids. So uh, I live in Jamaica Plain. Um, my uh, child is an eighth grader at BLA. And, um, you know, in 2018, we gamed the system. We um, hired a tutor. Um, my child, I think, got three answers correct the first time um, they took a sample test and um, you know um, they were tutored all summer long and just barely um, squeaked in to Boston Latin Academy and um, they are struggling so much there they um, hate it they hate Latin they hate the rigor <laughs> and I, I feel sorry um, every day that you know I exploited 
my financial means um, to really, you know, um, give her seat there when, you know, I'm not, it's not clear to me now that she deserved it. So I really support the changes that this task force has suggested so far. Um, I just really don't believe that families that have the financial means to exploit an unfair admission, admission system have a right to do that in perpetuity. Um, you know, furthermore, I'm really um, upset to see what's happening with this lawsuit that now um, hundreds of families are like, you know, the lawsuit is saying that, that families are being harmed because of this, but what about the families that are now in limbo? You know, their results are, uh, won't be known um, for weeks and um, so I, I support the work this group is doing. I support the change during the pandemic. And I uh, thank you all for your um, thoughtful work on this. Thank you. Next speaker is Mike Skolka. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Perfect. Hi everybody. Uh, good morning. My name is Mike Skolka. I live in Dorchester. Uh, I am not speaking today representing any groups I'm affiliated with, just to mention, I want to be clear. Uh, I'm a Latin school graduate, class of 97, and undoubtedly one of Mr. Conompass's favorite students. Uh, Amos, see, I greatly value my time at the school, and as a graduate, it's especially important for me to speak up. I think we all need to be more vocal about this. Now is the time for changing the system. As we talk about admissions criteria, we need to focus on something larger. We need to focus on making Boston's future more equitable and ensuring that all of Boston's youth have an even shot at success. Changing the exam school admissions process and changing how the exam schools operate and really changing the culture of the Boston public schools in general, these are all crucial components of making Boston the city we need it to become. I urge you to focus on equity in this process a focus on equity that understands the impacts of long-standing racist structures in our city, one that understands the social and economic factors that have impacted our residents for decades. The conversation around exam schools needs to reflect these larger issues. Uh, thank you for listening. Thanks for being part of this. And, and until next time, hey, uh, have a great Saturday, everybody. Thank you. Next. Speaker is Tora Golding. Hello, good morning. Um, thank you all for the work that, you're do that you've been doing on this. My name is Dora Golding. I live in Jamaica Plain. I have an eighth grader at Boston Latin Academy and a sixth grader at the Mission Hill School who is applying to exam schools this year. Um, I would largely echo the sentiments of the last two speakers. I mostly just want to say thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for the reforms that you are pushing in what has been a in deeply inequitable process for much too long. I strongly support the direction of the reforms that you have already proposed, um, and I would strongly object to any attempts to revert to the old way of doing things. Um, so thank you very much for the work that you're doing. Thank you. Next. Speaker is Sharon Hinton, followed by Sung Yu Pai on, and Karen Ayello. So, Sharon Hinton, if you can all please raise your hand. Hello. Hello. And good morning. My name is Sharon Hinton. I'm an educator mother of a B BPS graduate who is now a graduate student at Northeastern University, homeowner in Hyde Park, and president of Black Teachers Matter Incorporated. As I contemplated my testimony today regarding the exam school admissions policy at BLA, BLS, and the O'Brien, a feeling of anger, sadness, and fatigue came over me. Anger at the underlying racism behind the lawsuit filed by privileged white parents who either are educationally ignorant or willfully racist in their actions, anger at the Asian minority groups who are once again being pitted against another community of color as they both strive for academic excellence and educational opportunities for their children and families. Sadness that even after the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education ruling, Judge Garrity's desegregation decision in 50 years of Metco, we are still 
talking about academic and racial disparities in education in Boston. I'm tired, really, really tired of still dealing with these issues despite all the data, research, studies, legislations, commissions, community advocacies, task force, marches and protests, and yet black people are still dealing with the same crap. You think you're tired of the year of a pandemic? Fannie Lou Hamer said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Black people have been dealing with this for generations, for centuries, for 400 years. But because BPS continues to miseducate all of our students about the history, sacrifices, and contributions of Black, Indigenous, people of color in this country, certain people remain comfortably ignorant and entitled in their racism. Where was the outrage about the exam school admissions policies and practices when equally talented and academically excellent black and brown students were systematically discriminated against and marginalized in substandard schools and a racist system designed to keep them from participating in an American system that immigrants who come to this country can take advantage of? A system built on the backs of the free labor of black Americans, a system stacked against black, brown, and poor people, a system alive and well in the elitist, classist, racist Boston public school systems and in the exam institutions. Your white and Asian children are no more loved, no more intelligent, no more creative than the black and brown children in Boston. Enough is enough with stacking the deck in favor of the privilege against those whose tax dollars also support an educational system that should serve all. Thank you for your hard work that you're doing, and thank you for listening to me this morning. I will be fully participating in this process as a parent, as an educator, as a community activist, as a citizen of Boston. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Sung Jo Pai. Please raise your hand. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is Sunny Pai. I am a resident of Jamaica Plain. I'm a BPS, I've been working in BPS for 22 years and I'm a proud parent of two boys at the Curly K-8 where Ms. Grass is the principal. Um, I, uh, I'm teaching a class today actually around and we're talking about white supremacy culture and we're reading this document from Kenneth Jones and Temo Okun, some of you may know it. Um, that talks about characteristics of white supremacy culture. And all I can think about while I'm reading this document is how the competitive culture in our schools, exemplified by exam schools, but in all schools, is really exemplified in this document. And um, I think about the students I've met over the years at Charlestown High and the kids I've met at Boston Arts Academy and the kids at BAA, they felt special because they got into something special. And it was such a plus for us as a community to have students who felt that way. And then I look at some of the students at Charlestown who there's no application, there's no process to get in other than putting your name, you know, checking off a box. And how do we have a system where some kids are gonna feel special without other kids feeling less than? I don't think that that's possible. I've come to realize in this debate very recently that when we say high quality schools for all as a dream, I do not think that that's achievable when we start placing value on students and some students get messages that they're more special than others. I don't know what to do about that and how to reconcile that, but I'm watching the as an Asian person to see what's happening in the Asian community over this issue is personally very painful. And it's all related to these things I see in this document around white supremacy culture, around a capitalist culture and around competition. And so I just, I, I, I'm happy for the changes that have happened so far and I support them 100%. Um, I hope that this committee keeps thinking about that and thinking about the long-term impact, not just on the students who attend the exam schools, but the students who don't. And the implicit messaging that many students get that school is not for them, that school is not a place where they're gonna be highly successful and what the enormous impact is on the thousands and thousands of students who feel that way and the way we shoot ourselves in the foot as a school system 
to try to have, quote, high quality options for all. I really appreciate the time you all spend on this task force and I appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Karen Ayello. Karen Ayello. Hello. Hello. Um, I submitted written testimony that more um, fluently lays out a lot of what's already been said about white supremacy culture and the unbelievable systemic racism and bias that exists in our country, but also, you know, obviously within our Boston public school system. Um, so I think I'm just going to talk a little bit more from the heart instead of prepared statements. Um, and just so you know a little bit about me, um, I'm a 35. I'm a white female. I do not have children, um, but I was a Boston Public School student my whole life, and I attended Boston Latin School. Um, I don't know if it helps to have the perspective of a white person who did attend these schools, but I can say that there <laughs> was absolutely systemic racism and bias throughout the entire system. My experience before getting into an exam school. I mean, I think it's noteworthy to first say that general Boston public school education is severely lacking and we really need to address that. We need to get better resources and um, better education to all of our students and not just focus so much on these three elite schools. Um, but anyway, my, my experience as a student, um, my, when I first placed into the advanced placement program in fourth grade, I was so far behind that I almost flunked out of the fourth grade, even though I had straight A's up until that point. Um, that was really awful <laughs> and traumatic for such a young person to go through, um, who my entire life had been told I was so bright. Um, so I was ill-prepared. Um, then when I got to Boston Latin School, I was better prepared, but once I got there, I realized just how privileged everyone around me at that school was. I had only one other friend who hadn't come from a private school or a Catholic school, who didn't have private tutors, who um, didn't have the resources that their parents were able to give them in terms of like having their own spending money. When I was in high school, all through Latin school, I worked, I had a job because that's what I needed to do while all of my other friends were comfortable and got to spend their time on extracurricular activities. It enhanced their college admissions applications. Uh, most of them got free rides to college. And even though I am extremely grateful for the wonderful education Boston Latin School gave me, and put me on such a dramatically better path than I ever could have been on graduating from a general Boston public school system alone. I, jo I got just a tiny taste of what it feels like to be so in a sea of privileged people and just to be a little bit less advantaged. And while I was there, I also firsthand witnessed like systemic bias, racism, I could count on one hand the number of black students in my class who I graduated with um, and everyone else was white and Asian. I can't even recall having a Latina friend at all in the seven years that I was there. So I think that this, um, the, the change to base this on a not exam option is sorely needed. We should absolutely base this on students uh, from different backgrounds, um, take the top percent of students in different neighborhoods so that there is more equitable and diverse students ending up in these exam schools. And we're not spending our you know, public resources on students who have white privileged parents who can not only afford a lawsuit to prevent this, but could absolutely afford to send their kids to a private school. Um, so that's my, my two cents. And I thank you for even considering changing the system that we have right now, which is so deeply racist and unjust. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Travis Marshall. Hi, 
Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, thank you. Good morning. My name is Travis Marshall, and I'm a parent of a fourth and first grade students at the Phineas Bates Elementary School in Roslindale. Years ago, when we prepared to register our white son for kindergarten, we received no shortage of advice from other older white parents. A common thread ran throughout their guidance. There are some good elementary schools in Rosendale and West Roxbury, an awkward sixth grade year, and then you can go to one of the exam schools. This about a four-year-old child whose academic career had not even begun. This playground chatter is ubiquitous in the more affluent zip codes of our city. And it's the first step in a pipeline that leads through parochial schools and select BPS schools with community wealth and fundraising ability. This pipeline is cloaked in the myth of meritocracy to assuage any concerns about over and underrepresented neighborhoods and socioeconomic groups, as well as the students for whom exam school seats are simply not an expectation. As a friend whispered to me during Dr. Caselius's early listening tours, why are we spending so much time talking about exam schools? They aren't even for kids like my son. Currently, a small but vocal minority of parents have cried for a return to an admission system that has proven to exacerbate inequity in our schools. I speak to you today to say that there are many of us in support of your work and in support of a Boston Public Schools that does not concentrate neighborhood wealth and poverty in separate schools. I hope that a future refined policy might use census tract data as a measure as opposed to the broader brush of zip codes. I'm well aware that a permanent change to admissions may decrease the chance that my own kids will receive inv invitations to these schools. But the fact that they had been more likely to under the previous system is exactly why you are tasked with the charge of fixing it. In our vastly unequal city, the advantages some students are born with or happen upon because of where they live should not be compounded and exacerbated by our school system. Where a student lives should not determine uh, excuse me, ensuring these schools better reflect our city's children is a step toward a better and more equitable district for everyone. And I appreciate your work and I applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Lucia Colombaro. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lucia Colombaro. I am a BLS alumna from the class of 1992. Um, very happy to be here. Um, I also uh, worked at the Boston Latin School Association uh, out of college for two years. And I have a very strong commitment. I've spent many hours of my life uh, advocating and supporting for um, supp uh, the students at Boston Latin School. Um, and I have a very inside view of um, how things work. And um, I also am deeply committed um, to my class and to um, the love and affection that we share for one another. Um, my class was the beneficiary of the affirmative action admission policy that was in place from the 70s until the, the McLaughlin case in 1997. And I don't think we knew at the time, but it turns out that we were the most diverse student body in the history of Boston Latin School. And currently the percentages of black and brown students at Boston Latin is analogous to pre-desegregation era numbers. Um, so it's, it's been a shocking uh, consideration that um, anyone would uh, advocate uh, to revert back to that. The experience of my class cannot be an anomaly in the history of the school. And so we cannot go backwards. So I'm here to very strongly support the efforts of the task force uh, to reform admissions uh, to the exam schools and not to uh, revert to um, what has always been in place, except for a very particular 25 year period where intentional effort was made to create actual real equity and opportunity. And it wasn't enough then. 
Um, so I want to make sure to, as an alum uh, and a resident of Boston, I live in Dorchester, uh, that this temporary process, uh, my hope is that it uh, moves into a more permanent system and that the awareness and understanding uh, of the history of our city, of our country, because of the historic nature, particularly of Boston Latin School, uh, and the use of systemic racism to create um, uh, generational, um, just to create a culture that is not representative of what humanity needs to be and not representative of what education is supposed to do in serving the development of every child to be a functioning and um, uh, well member of society that can then contribute back. And the idea that our black and brown um, uh, fellow uh, city members uh, and the children um, are in any way lesser and that having more black and brown children at Boston Latin School would somehow degrade the school is outrageous and strictly racist. And um, I would like to see that change. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you. Next speaker is Celeste Atala Gutierrez. Good morning. Yep. Good morning. Buenos dias a todos que hablan español. Uh, my name is Celeste Atala Gutierrez. I am the proud parent of two children at the Rafael Hernandez School. We are a bilingual, multiracial, and multicultural family living the complexities of what it means to be part of historically and currently oppressed groups, and also those with historical and systemic power. Um, although I'm here speaking as a mother, I'm also a psychologist and work as a clinician and a consultant in a BPS high school and have worked in various BPS schools and in the community for over 15 years. Um, I work and I'm in community with amazing, brilliant students and families, most of whom are Latinx immigrants, first generation United Statesian and low income. As we, we've been talking about, right, they're underrepresented in the exam schools and not because they are less brilliant, hopeful, motivated or deserving, but because our current educational system is one where those with power and privilege related to race and class continue to retain access to resources, right, which is racism. And it's disturbing and unacceptable that these three schools have so much more than other schools. I'm really thankful and appreciative of the work by the task force to create a more just system, even if that means that my child doesn't receive an invitation to an exam school next year. Although the process has been confusing um, and I you know, wish it had been a little bit more transparent for our own family, I know that making systemic change is messy and will take time. So I'm here to express my strong support for the work that the task force is doing um, to reform the admission systems. And you know, I also do appreciate Dr. Caselius and others critique of the existence of exam schools in the first place um, and was very moved by um, Mr. Pai's comments earlier, like I mean, complete agreement. To be honest, um, you know, I'd like for my sixth grader with the system as it currently stands to receive an invitation to an exam school next year. It would be one option for him. And like all parents, we want to have options so that we can make the best choice for our child. Um, and at the same time, I also understand that to undo decades and centuries of racist policies, for the system to be fair for all children, it means that my child might not receive an invitation. Because my children will always be my number one priority, I believe that contributing and creating a more just and anti-racist community benefits them and all of us much more than attending an exam school. Um, and I'm excited for all three of the exam schools to represent um, the amazing diverse communities of Boston. This will undoubtedly also improve these schools. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker is George Sullivan. George Sullivan, are you there?
Hmm. George Sullivan, we can't hear you. Hello? Okay, so I think we're going to move on to the next. Vijay Hedge. Vijay Hedge. I don't see anyone with that name. Okay, so now we have reached our Cantonese speakers, um, which means that I will turn off the interpretation icon and interpreters and the public will all be in the main room. Interpreters, please stop interpreting and mute yourself for this part of the testimony. So, yeah, uh, Anna, is that you? Hi, I'm here. Thank you very much. So the next speaker is Yuan Wen. I don't see anyone with that name. You are, Can you hear us, you are? Let us know. You are. Okay, so let's go to the next oh, person. Hi, we, we can go back. It, Leah okay. Wu. Leah, Leah Wu. You're now uh, hello, hello, hello. So we speak a few sentences so I can interpret for you. Okay. Uh, you can begin. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay, Hi everyone. I'm a parent of GQUS. Um I'm I am Happy to be here to share my thoughts with you. Okay, Julia. Yeah, I hope that this job is a little bit more than we can consider our parents' I hope that um, this task force can really consider uh, what, we th what, what we think um, and our opinion. It's a um, uh, zip code to eliminate um, uh, the zip code system to take a uh, mission for the student for the exam school. Hey, mong bochi tong ji chin yet yung uh yung how si ga fong sik to keep the old system um having an exam and for a mission. How ji ge how ya pui ni sam gan exam school to let the kids to take their own exam to be admitted to this three exam school. This will be a fair chance for all the students. And also to keep the standard for this, uh, this school um, in a, uh, academically. So soon they uh tie yip call yap even those students be admitted um, according to the zip code, um, they gain their admission to this exam school, doesn't mean they can keep the standard in that uh, academically in those schools. I hope that all the students uh, okay. We hope that um, it will be a fair chance for the student to take their own exam to have the ability to admit to this school or not because of the zip code um, to let them gain a chance to this uh, school admission. Uh, Even if the kids get a mission because of the zip code um, system, they may not be able to do uh, as well in school. It can be a difficult uh, for them. 
，但系有啲。誒睇醫科入唔到去嗰啲學生咧，嗰啲水平達到呢三間學校咧，但係對呢啲學生又係好唔公平嘅。And the and and the and the and the student that didn't get admission because of the zip code system that they they didn't have a chance for the admission is very unfair to them, even though、um, their academic level is it's good. 嗯、um, ，我今日係咁多法員，多謝大家俾呢個機會俾我。<laughs> Thank you so much for listening to my opinion.、Um, this is a great chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, Leilia, guys, hi. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you.、Uh, next Cantonese in,、um, speaker is Jody Chen. 下一位系 Jody Chen， 广东话嘅。Jody 喺咪度啊？度，你哋听到我讲嘛？哦，听到，听到。Can you hear me? 聽到聽到，我哋聽到。嚇、okay, 啊，你講幾句，我又譯幾句，咁好唔好？好啊。Um, hey. 大家好，早晨。Good morning, everyone. Hello, all. 今日好高興可以喺呢度啊，講下我嘅意見。I'm very happy to be here to share my thoughts with you. 嗯、um, ，今日聽咗咁多啊家長嘅意見。I listened to all the parents what they have to say this morning. 佢哋好似都有講公平呢樣嘢。They talk about fair and equity。咁對於我係一個啊亞裔嘅家庭，我哋都好希好希望喺呢個國家得到公平對待。嗯、mm -hmm. um, ，For us、um, Asian Americans family, we want fairness and equity as well。我哋好尊重公平。We respect fairness and equity. 同埋，但系我哋更加尊重呢个叫做公平竞争。And we actually、um, respect more the fairness of competition. 咁样呢几间考试入学嘅学校 ，to these、uh, exam schools, these several exam schools， 就系一个公平竞争嘅一种体现。It is an example of fairness competition. 同种族无关。It's got nothing to do with racial、um, problems. 系凭实力讲说话嘅。It's through、uh, merit and、um, qualification. 我有小朋友系读紧啊四年级。I have a child who is in fourth grade. 佢成績唔係太好。His grade is not that great。但係去讀呢三間學校係我哋嘅目標。But for him to go to one of these exam school is our goal。雖然我唔知道佢得唔得。I don't know if you can make it。但係我哋 ，sorry。但係我哋，我哋會啊努力嘅。But we will try our best。點解我哋要努力咧？ Why do we have to try our best? Because we believe. Ah, these few schools have more resources, so all the good and capable children will be in that school. Because we believe these schools have the best resources, or better resources that can provide better for our children for education. So I think. 考試呢個制度同種族冇關。So I believe、um, the exam, the 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 exam, the、um, exam test got nothing to do with a racial、uh, problem。所有嘅有競爭能力嘅小朋友都係有機會入呢間學校，咁先啱。For all the children who、um, who can Who has the ability to complete,、um, has the ability to get into those schools, these exam schools. 咁點解其他啊種族嘅啊人士都大家好想去呢三間學校咧？你講多次點解好點樣好想？啊，點解所有種族嘅人都想去呢三間學校、uh, okay. ？We wonder why all the different race, um. Parents or the kids want to go to these exam schools. My opinion is, in my opinion, because these three schools 
有更加好嘅資源。Because this school had the best, better or the best resources. 咁我認為要啊，大家都得到更好嘅啊教育，更加好嘅資源咧。I believe if you want better、uh, resources and education, 就唔係將呢三間學校考試嘅制度取消佢。Is not to eliminate the the admission the exam admission test. 應該咧，首先係將波士頓其他國家學校嘅資源都提高。First, we should increase all resources to all the school in PPS. And then, these three schools' admissions. And then,、uh, the the admission test for all the exam schools. Should be even stronger. Because if we do this, we can help Boston University admissions schools to increase their admissions to all the exam schools. Because if we do this, we can help Boston University admissions schools to increase their admissions to all the exam schools. Because if we do this, we can help Boston University admissions <laughs> Not at all. In that case, we can gather all the、uh, kids with the highest ability and better ability to, to go to these exam school. Okay. So, 咁佢哋会有更加高嘅竞争力 Then they can be. They have will have better um, uh, uh competition or uh, yeah. 咁样佢哋可以考到啊。更加好嘅學校 ，then they can、um, get into better schools through exams。咁我諗，我嘅諗法係 ，I believe， 咁樣係幫助到 Boston City 咧 ，it will help the city of Boston， 所有嘅小朋友 ，all the children， 嚟誒有更加好嘅機會去去一啲更加好嘅啊高嘅大學。得到更加高嘅教育 ，better chance to get、uh, better education to go to better colleges。所以最後我想講兩句説話。So at the end, I will, there's two things I want to say。第一件事係應該 keep 呢個三間啊 exam school 嘅考試制度。So first, um, we should keep the admission test for these three exam schools。第二咧就係希望。所有波士頓公立學校或者波士頓學啊嗰啲學校嘅資源都要一並全部提高，咁樣咧，就算哦、oh, ，sorry，and and second we should all increase all the resources in all the BPS school in that case， 繼續。如果嗰啲小朋友競爭能力冇咁高嘅，去唔到呢三間學校嘅。If other kids are um They not as competitive, not as do as well. They couldn't get into these exam school. 其他学校都系会得到好嘅教育。In other school, they can still get a very good education because they have increased resources in in all other school as well. 呢啲就系叫做公平同埋公平竞争。That's I believe is what fairness means. Fairness competition means. 多谢晒。Thank you so much. 唔该晒你啊 ，Jody。Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker hasn't indicated if they needed、um, interpretation, so I'm going to keep all interpreters、okay. in the room so far. May you? May you? You are here. May you? You are here. May you? Is it speaking Chinese or is it speaking Chinese? Yes, I can speak、uh, English. Oh, okay. Okay. So, <laughs> Thank you. So, just、oh. a second. So, then I'm going to start interpretation. I'm going to send all the interpreters back to their、uh, Thank channels. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay.、Uh, good morning, everyone.、Uh, thank you for being here to speak.、Uh, I'm May Yu. I'm the parent of the PPS to Sequency Elementary School third grade, and my other children graduate from the Boston Learning Academy. For my experience, I would like to exam instead of the zip code. The zip code is very unfair method of the deciding who goes to exam schools. The exam is far is fair because everyone can study for it and take it, even if the child does very well in school. 
it doesn't guarantee that they get into an exam school. That means the exam can make child more educated to learn and get diverted, getting into the exam school. And the last thing we hope the BPS will seriously consider this issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Ms. Sullivan and Mr. Contempasis, we have two more speakers that are trying to speak um, that were signed up. So I'm going to try with them again. George Sullivan, could you try again? George Sullivan, you're unmuted. Yes. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm a parent and uh, I'm resident of Roslindale and uh, my son is in Boston Island School. Um, what I want to say is um, uh, when we're talking about the fairness um, and uh, the, um, um, some, some uh, minority groups, uh, um, uh, students uh, lack uh, representative in the uh, um, uh, Boston Latin and the other three uh, other uh, exam schools. Um, I think the best way to increase the um, uh, um, black and brown student in the uh, three exam schools is we need to improve the all Boston, Boston uh, public schools. We have 120 Boston public schools about 120 schools in the Boston school systems. And um, the focus should be improve the uh, minority students, uh, the, the, their education in all the Boston public school, in those 120 schools and the increase their chance to get into those three exam schools. Instead, the, the focus shouldn't be to reduce the use different way to downgrade the three exam schools to get a more um, uh, minority student into those schools. So um, if we really want to fairness, we want to uh, improve the, those uh, minority students, the, 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 the future, we should look into how to prepare them uh, in the elementary school to get them good uh, foundation to get into the better schools. So increase the, the, improve their education in all the 120 schools, have the, have the better education for them so they can have the solid foundation to get into these three exam schools. The focus shouldn't be downgrading those three element, uh, exam schools to make it to similar like other public schools. So what the, what's the purpose to have the three exam schools? What's the original purpose? Let's don't forget about that. The, the, the focus now is all, all the focus is going to like, try to somehow downgrade the, the, the exam schools to get the racial balance or something why don't we think about uh, how to improve all the 120 public schools in all our Boston public school systems and get those, uh, those uh, uh, all the low income or uh, uh, disadvantaged families, the kids have a better opportunity to have, have the better education for them in the elementary schools so they can be more easily to get into the, the, the exam schools. So that's that's my my all I want to say. You know, instead, if we we try to go the path we're taking last year, and that means eventually, if if that's a goal, why don't we just remove all the exam schools, make them just like our other other hundred twenty public schools? That's all. That's all my 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 uh, my. Um, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. And then we are have the last speaker that signed up is Vijay Hedge. Uh, I think signed up. Yes, Maria Mercurio. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. 
Uh, hi, uh, my name is Vijay Hegde, uh, and we've been a Boston public school family for 10 years. We are two kids, one in BLS and one at the Curly. I see both principals uh, right there. Uh, I'm gonna make uh, three points. First about the admission criteria, and then um, I'll go on to the, my other two. So we know how the system works. We know it very well. Uh, the admi admission request uh, has two components, grades and exams. Exams are objective, grades are arbitrary. Our child who uh, scores two standard deviations above the mean gets graded the same as kids who are at average, the same B grade. We know how the grades are gamed and you know, if you take away exams and just leave grades, then it will become, a, the whole point will be gaming the grading system. We as other well-to-do families will take our kids out of school for the crucial part where grades matter. We'll employ tutors to homeschool them and we will grade them as A+. Plus. We know how to play the system if you change the system. If you want this to be fair, get rid of grades, keep the exams. You can change the exams to only include what is taught in school. You can get rid of ISE and get a more fair exam, but keep the exam, get rid of grades because grades can, can, be, great, can be gained. The second point I wanna make is about the way the fiasco unfolded this year for next year's admissions. The reason you are dealing with this fiasco is because BPS acted this year just like it's acted in prior years. For example, with the busing uh, uh, fiasco. BPS is arbitrary and capricious and has not consulted parents before they've come up with decisions. So the decision that people came up with this year, primarily to exclude Asian students, reminds me of the Asian Exclusion Act of 1930s. We will fight this. We will fund the parents who are fighting this, even if we don't have a child trying to get into BLS. Be on notice about that. My third point to educators is stick to your core competency, educate the children. Don't try to socially engineer society because you will end up with results that will be quite contrary to what you're trying to do. If you try to both educate and re-engineer society, you will be successful in neither. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan and Mr. Contopassis. We don't yes. have any more um, any more speakers signed up. Great. I, do, I do see we have people raising their hand. I don't know. Um, it's up to you. So we are we were scheduled um, for an hour. Um, we have gone over now by seventeen minutes. Um, I do want to be mindful um, that we are starting to, um, uh, again, that, that folks made a commitment for an hour. Um, we did have the sign-in sheet, um, so I'm, I'm pleased that we were able to extend the time in order to accommodate all who signed up in advance. I want to encourage um, those who want to continue to weigh in on this process um, to um, sign up for comments on Tuesday. That will be the next opportunity um, to share verbal comments. But as always, um, you can submit written comments um, at any time um, to, um, to this body and, um, and it will be shared um, with, with the members. So again, just wanting to be respectful of time, um, we are going to close, begin to close out um, this session. Uh, I do have a, a, 
a few observations, but before I, I share them, Mr. Condon Passas, um, do you have anything that you'd like to share? And then we'll ask other members of the task force. No, other than uh, echoing what you said, thanks to everybody who is taking the time and is interested in this. Uh, we will continue this process as was mentioned at the beginning, uh, every Tuesday going forward. Uh, and I would encourage you to, uh, if you have neighbors or friends or whatever, to make uh, the opportunity available to them as well. With that, I'll turn it back to you, Ms. Sullivan. Thank you. Um, are there any other um, comments from task force members before I um, comment? I want to offer my thanks to those who testified and those who provided interpretation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krager. I don't see any other hands raised from task force members. Thank you. Um, so, Again, I, I, I want to, um, to thank uh, the task force members uh, for, for being on this morning. I know this, again, is very important. This part of the process is very important to all of us and want to thank the BPS team again um, for being here on a Saturday morning and for our um, dynamic and interpretation team. Um, for making sure, helping to make sure that uh, this session is accessible, um, language accessible, um, that is critically important. I, I also want to thank um, those who um, shared testimony um, today. It was um, authentic. Um, in many respects, just um, displayed uh, vulnerability. Um, and most importantly for me, um, a deep love for our city, for our schools, and for our children. Um, I was um, at many points caused to, given cause to just reflect um, during the testimony. And I want to, um, you know, share that, that I heard it all um, and that I really do seek to understand it all um, and understand the different perspectives that were brought um, to the forefront today in particular. Um, with that, I continue to be encouraged by our city. I, I really I'm encouraged by what I heard today. I'm encouraged by our collective resolve um, to, um, to learn together through this process, um, to evolve <laughs> as a community um, and, and to grow. Um, I'm also mindful hearing uh, the testimony today or reminded um, by hearing the testimony today that this conversation, um, this charge that we have as a task force with respect to these um, schools, these, this exam school poli admissions policy um, has very high potential um, to be an incredibly divisive process for our city. And I'm committed, I believe Mr. Compton Passas is committed uh, to doing what we can do to ensure that that is not the case. Uh, because as a city, um, as, a, as a community, as stakeholders in the BPS community, um, we cannot afford to allow that to happen. We've come too far for that to be the case. And so I personally remain unwavering in my commitment to educational equity, access and opportunity for all of our children. We heard that theme um, throughout this morning's conversation 
about the need for all of our children, regardless of what school they attend within BPS, to have access and opportunity through those, um, those school communities. Um, I'm also committed from a leadership standpoint to making sure that this process is one that is respectful, that it's inclusive, um, and that it is data driven. Um, and you know, as I was listening today, um, I do hear a need for us to, you know, share more about um, how data will play into um, into this process. And I'm committed to having an outcome that is thoughtful. That is that 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 is innovative, um, that is equitable, and that is just uh, for all of our children uh, residing in the city of Boston, and as a result, one that does maintain rigor um, for our students, um, and one that does provide for again a quality education um, for all of our kids. So. Again, I want to thank everybody um, for being here, um, for participating. I hope that you will continue to do so throughout this process. Um, and with that, um, I want to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Condon Passes. I thought we wanted to stay here all morning. No second. Thank you. Everybody is, is, is uh, uh, thoughtfully listening. Your words hit home. So, so with that, we need a second. Did we get a second from yes, anyone? We did from Ms. Grasa. Great. So, um, Ms. Parvet? Yes. Um, just a second. Uh, Mr. Acevedo? Ms. Aguirre? Miss, uh, Mr. Gregor, Gregor? Uh, aye. Dr. Freeman Wisdom? Aye. Miss Grassa? Aye. Miss Lum? Aye. Miss Nagasawa? Miss Garrett? Aye. Miss Tang? Aye. Miss Wade? Miss Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Contempassis? Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day, folks. Yep. Bye. See you all Tuesday. Thank you, everybody.